And I chair the Resilience Committee for NCSEA, that's the National Council of Structural Engineers Associations. Uh, and we, cut, we, de we work with a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about today, but just to be clear, I'm not presenting today on behalf of NCSCA or the committee. Uh, similarly, uh, you'll see me refer to a number of projects and clients that I've worked with, things that I've been uh, involved with over the years, but again, I'm speaking only on my own behalf and not on behalf of any of them. So anything uh, stupid that I say is entirely on me. And uh, finally, uh, kind of a disclaimer, but also an invitation, you'll see as we talked that a lot of the examples I give are about earthquake design. And that's because I'm from San Francisco. And it's also because uh, seismic design has been at the forefront of what is emerging as a resilience-based design movement. But we want to include uh, other hazards as well. And we'll talk about other hazards a little bit. But uh, so on the one hand, I want to apologize a little bit for being so heavy on earthquake. But if you think it's too heavy on earthquake, then I guess my advice is, get involved from the wind community, the snow community, the flood community, and we want to turn those ideas of designing for resilience to be more multi-hazard and comprehensive. So with that as background, uh, here's what I'm going to be talking about today. We'll spend the first half, I think Maria mentioned 35 minutes, it'll probably be, cl be closer to 45, uh, the first half talking about what we think of as resilience uh, and importantly what we also uh, should be careful of uh, in terms of that definition. And then the second half, we'll get into what the implications are both for existing buildings and for new buildings. So to start with then, uh, let's talk about some definitions or some ideas that have been out there. If you've heard about resilience, uh, you've probably heard it recently in recent years as it relates to structural or building design. What you might not know is that there's a long academic history of uh, talking about resilience. And it comes from psych psychology, it comes from economics, it comes from even ecology. Uh, and you can see on the slide here a number of different subcategories of resilience. We're not going to talk about any of those because that's all in the academic literature and the way resilience has been talked about in our community as structural engineers is a little bit different and we really don't have to dig into those details, but you should know that there is a long history and a background and that's going to influence how we work with other organizations. But in recent years, we've begun to see this idea that there's such a thing as resilience or resilience-based design or resilient cities or resilient communities. And you may have heard of the Rockefeller Foundation's 100 Resilient Cities program. Here is a graphic they came up with to describe the idea several years ago, where they said, what, what makes a resilient community? What makes a resilient city? And they had four categories and a bunch of subcategories. And before you know it, they have 140 different variables that go into defining what a resilient community might be. Okay, that's a little bit complicated, but if you don't like that, just uh, hold on because uh, the next year it became 152 indicators. So we got a lot of uh, uh, detail behind this and the models keep changing and Rockefeller is not the only one. Here's another model from a different organization. Uh, maybe a little bit clearer to read uh, because they put some things in the middle and some other things are uh, out in the edges. I actually like the Rockefeller model uh, better. Here you can see if you look d uh, deeply at the black text that they're identifying this idea that some things are more priority, uh, higher priorities in terms of when they get restored after an event. That's an idea that we'll come back to. But again, there are even more models. Here's one from the UN, which is less a definition and more of a how-to, uh, how to make your community resilient, which is a little bit, it seems like a good idea, but it's a little bit silly. I mean, look at number five at the top of the screen. Uh, make education and healthcare infrastructure disaster resilient. Uh, okay, let's do that, but it's not really helpful. It reminds me of uh, an old joke from Steve Martin about uh, how to be a millionaire. Step one, get a million dollars. So that's uh, a model or a diagram. Everybody's got a diagram or a flow chart. They're not all circles. Here's one from our colleagues at MSEER, uh, an earthquake uh, engineering research uh, organization, very academic. It has a nice little acronym that adds up to peoples, but in their model, they've got a very detailed uh, uh, academic model with uh, triple integrals and blanks, and you fill in the data, and you run the flow chart, and uh, at the end, out pops at the top the resilient community or the resilient system. So this is kind of the history of resilience in the academic world, even as it relates to engineering. The problem, of course, is we have none of the data to fill into these blanks, so a very complicated model like this is not immediately helpful to us. But there are a lot of people thinking about this. In fact, you can see here there's a lot of models that I haven't even shown you and we don't have time to talk about. And the question is, how do they relate to what we do as structural engineers? 
Well, we have our own model because we have our own terminology that we've been developing over time. And it kind of starts with this, safety, economy, reoccupancy, recovery. These are terms that we uh, are now becoming more familiar with. Sometimes you'll hear them discussed as uh, the opposite of these, but deaths, dollars, and downtime. Uh, in more polite company, we might flip those over and talk about the positive attributes of safety, economy, reoccupancy, and recovery. These are attributes of buildings, and we are getting better at predicting what these are, given some kind of a damaging event, potentially a hurricane or an earthquake.